This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Hello, Cardinal fans. Welcome to the 15th episode of the St. Louis Cardinals Unrestricted Podcast. This is your host, Christian May Suzuki, and I think we have to be asking ourselves as Cardinal fans over the last couple weeks, what on earth is J.A. happening with this team? What on earth is happening with J.A. Happ, for that matter? He came onto the team among the worst in basically everything. I mean, exit velo, hard hit percentage allowed, expected ERA, regular ERA. There's not a lot of things that he was excelling at this season. And as an older pitcher, that's not the best sign. So when he came onto the Cardinals, of course, people were not necessarily particularly happy with that and in a way he's proven us wrong I've certainly proven me wrong since joining the team he's only allowed three runs in almost 17 innings he has a sub one whip and he he really shut down two of the three teams that he's faced he gave up two runs in five innings versus the Braves but I mean that's not particularly terrible it's it's nothing to cry home about it, they're not the Dodgers or the Yankees or some juggernaut offensively, but I mean, two runs against a professional baseball team is still plenty fine. It's it's more than enough for what the Cardinals are looking for at this point, especially out of him. Now, on top of that, the Cardinals themselves have looked a lot better. You look at their hitting in the first half; they're hitting two thirty, three hundred one, three seventy nine. The power just wasn't there. I mean, look at that. That's a 680 OPS. That's just, that's not going to cut it for a team. And when you get to the second half, that bumps up to 265, 336, 443 so far. Obviously, that makes a huge difference. And there is something to be said about the sticky ball situation and perhaps the crackdown on that might have contributed a bit to an improvement in hitting but you know we'll take whatever we can get at this point and it remains to be seen whether or not that's the case there aren't a lot of guys who have necessarily had eye-popping numbers coming out of the break but the team itself is scoring more than a half run more per game from about four to 4.6 basically but I'm not necessarily getting my hopes up yet in part because if you really look at it and you really think about it the season of J.A. Happ in many ways is sort of a microcosm for the way the St. Louis Cardinals season has gone on so far they were not playing well not performing not putting up the numbers that they need to succeed and they come out of the break and they have a few good games they take down a a couple of good teams coming out but they also have picked on quite a few not so good teams now does shutting down the royals and the pirates mean that i think that is gonna is it gonna convince me that jay hap has somehow turned a corner and is going to be a serviceable pitcher for the rest of the season probably not Let's be real, probably not. And uh, just because the Cardinals have come out on a good streak, beaten a couple bad teams, picked on a couple bad pitchers, does that necessarily mean that we should be getting our hopes up and saying that this team might be ready for it? Probably not. Now, making the playoffs is obviously a pretty nice thing to do. It's It's the goal of most any organization or at least the start of goals for any organization and you know making the playoffs at this point means facing pretty tough competition in the wild card probably the Dodgers or the Giants possibly the Padres but I highly doubt that you might not have a shot but at this point getting to that point and being able to compete even in one game at that level just getting that taste is 
good enough to make this season not a success necessarily, but something that you can take some positives from for sure. Honestly, when you when you're gauging success, it is all relative. It's all based on where your organization is. But at the end of the day, you're looking to win a title if you're any team. And it's about doing things that put you in that position. Trading for Jay Happ and John Lester gets you through this season, but does it put you in a better position next year? Does it put you in a position to win? Does it get you any closer to the goal? Not necessarily. It, you can make an argument that protecting Oviedo and allowing him to develop in the minors is, is part of that track, but I it's it's hard for me to really see that in the grand scheme of things. And, you know, I could be wrong. If Jay Hap continues to eat innings like this, then, you know, hey, he could sign on for one more year and he could be a key key piece in uh, a championship run. But, man, I just, I can't see that. It's hard for me to really imagine that considering how bad he was at the beginning of the season, considering his age, and just considering the stuff that he's shown and the things that he's proven from the eye test. He's throwing in the low 90s. He has low spin on the fastball. Yes, he's being able to control it, but when the average velo in the league is in the mid-90s, even after the sticky ball situation, you're just not going to cut it with bad breaking balls It's basically at this point. And a slow fastball with very little spin. It's it's just not going to work. And a big part of the reason that it has worked for the Cardinals is while the first couple of wins were definitely impressive, you know, particularly against the Giants coming out of the All-Star break, a lot of the games that they've played are just not at that level. They're just not there. There's, there's a lot of games in a 162-game season, and a lot of times teams aren't in that same zone you know you can say the same thing for even a 16 game nfl season definitely for the 82 game nba season but you are playing in the middle of the season against teams that have a long way to go and are already out of contention and you have seven games of the last nine with five different starters you know you played two of them twice five different starters with over five ERA, you know, this isn't the steroid era anymore. That is not good. Even in the American League, that is that is the threshold of being, in fact, not good. It's not good. It's bad. Like let's be real. Five ERA is not where you want to be. So if you're not picking on teams with a five ERA, then then there's a much deeper issue than making the playoffs. And if that's the way that the St. Louis Cardinals are going to make the playoffs, then you know what? You don't expect anything more than going out there and getting experience as a fan because anything else and you're going to be disappointed. And that's sort of the approach that the team needs to, to take. If, if you're really going to push for the playoffs, you do it to give guys experience in the these tough situations in these high pressure moments and you know the only way you can really simulate that in many cases is actually being in the playoffs being in a wild card game even if you get trounced everything about the process of getting there of being there of being in that game it can be very valuable in a future run when the team is a little bit more acclimated a little bit more ready a little bit more better developed and have you know less humongous holes in it as the Cardinals do at this point so one of the good tests of of that will be Burns versus Wainwright tonight it'll be interesting to see if they can keep it up against Burns they've done a pretty decent job but it's uh it's hard to say it's hard to say they've they've been conditioned against some of these bad pitchers so it's hard to say whether how long it'll get to get adjusted to a guy like Burns. Who knows? We'll we'll see. 
but I am very suspect about how well they're going to be able to do against Burns tonight. And if they prove me wrong, then I will be very, very cautiously optimistic because that would be beyond my expectations and that would be something that perhaps could quant- you know, warrant a playoff run, could constitute the makings of a playoff team. And that is something that we need to see this year because with the guys that we have, the Goldschmidt and the Arenado trades that were made, if you are not going to make a run with those guys, then it is a humongous letdown for the entire organization and for all of its fans. These were two of the biggest trades that you have made in essentially the modern era. And if you don't supplement that with anything, with any title, you you are in danger of being even more disappointing than Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, Javi Baez, Addison Russell, the incredibly talented Cubs that were supposed to be almost dynastic, that are basically considered a disappointment because they only won one. And you're the Cardinals, a storied franchise, an organization that has one of the most World Series in the entire league. And your biggest move of the modern era, barring, I guess, David Freeze, but since that wasn't necessarily big big money when that started, it doesn't really count. But the biggest, highest profile moves and the biggest names that have been acquired in the modern era of Cardinal Baseball via trade, if you don't do anything to even come close to sniffing an NLCS, even a, a World Series appearance, because this team is nowhere near that point yet, if you can't even put something together with that capability, you have some serious problems, especially because the outfield is almost set in stone. You know, O'Neill Bader Carlson has the makings of a starting outfield for the next five, six, seven years. You, you have pieces and you have talent around. Which is why it is so frustrating to see John Melzeliak, Mike Schilt, and all these guys seemingly flub up what this team could be. And, you know, it's not all on one particular guy. I think it's the blame is shared, just as it should be amongst leadership. And at the end of the day, they really need to do something to make this better because it could end up being one of the greatest disappointments in Cardinal history. So back to the playoff run and back to that vein in preparing this team and preparing the young core for the playoffs, I think that part of it starts on September 3rd. I think we'll really get to see the makings of this team starting on September 3rd. And yes, that sounds cliche, sounds corny. Yes, September baseball is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I get what you're saying. I know. But I think part of it comes down to the level of competition and just the general profile of the games that they're going to be playing. So from September 3rd, let's, let's go down the line here. So September 3rd, you get th- you start a three-game series in Milwaukee. September 7th, you start a four-game series at home against the Dodgers. September 10th, you start a three-game series at home against Cincy. The 13th is three games in New York against the Mets. The 17th, come back home for three games against the Padres. And then you close out the season with series again in Milwaukee, in Chicago, and then home against Milwaukee and home against Chicago. Now, generally speaking, that is a above average schedule. You have Milwaukee, who's obviously a very, very solid team. You're playing them twice on the road and three times overall. You have the Dodgers, who are going to be competing for a spot at that point, most likely, and will be putting, you know, all foot on all their feet on the gas pedal and really pushing to win there. 
you can argue that Cincy and New York Mets aren't as good, but they're still definitely teams with a lot of talent that can definitely, if the push is right, can really be a big wall, a big obstacle, and can can are very talented tw- squads. And then again, the Padres again will probably be competing with the Cardinals at this point. That's if if they are at that point that's that's what we'll probably be looking at right there that will end up being one of the biggest series of the season that three games against san diego now of course that could end up not being but i think it's still important to approach the end of the season no matter what position they're in like it's a playoff push like they're trying to win as many games as possible to make the playoffs and it can be difficult to fabricate that if you're if you're not actually in it but they're not going to necessarily be too far out where it becomes so disillusioned that of course you're not going to make the playoffs you you do want to even if you're going to miss it by game two games you want to simulate that environment and really look to push those younger guys to really show you what you they can do when the lights are on Because that's what really matters at the end of the day, especially with baseball and how long a regular season is. If you can't bring it together when the lights are on in October, then there's a really, really low ceiling to your ability as a baseball player or your your legacy as a baseball player. And that's that's just the unfortunate reality. And they got to start preparing for that right now. They have to start, even if it's not necessarily a spot where they can win, they need to get the experience and act like they could win in order to know what that's like when they do have, in fact, the ability to win. Competing at a high level and learning how to compete in the playoffs is important in every sport. We see all sorts of teams struggle, no matter how talented they are, when they get there for the first time, you you struggle to acclimate to the pressure, to the environment, and, and things happen. You, you want an example for the Cardinals? Look no further than the Detroit Tigers that we beat in the World Series. That team was absolutely killer. And they just imploded, basically. Obviously, there were some great performances we had from guys like Anthony Reyes, and, and Weaver and whatnot, and you know I'm not trying to undersell the the performance and the ability of that team, but that Detroit Tigers squad was incredibly talented. But they were led by young guys. They were led by a rookie pitcher, who at the end of the day he was is a Hall of Famer most likely, but just wasn't quite ready to to cut it at that level because there is no simulating that kind of pressure and there is no really predicting how anyone is going to approach that until they actually get to that point and that's that's just the cruel reality of it because you you just you need to know those things and you need to know them quick if if we're competing in the window that we are so it's it's really important that if if they're not competing that they really try to at least act like they are and you know there are games that they're going to have against for example the cubs yes the cubs might not be very much right now but they're still professional players and the reality is is that rivalries will push guys to play harder and to play a little bit more for pride than they might normally and in a season where the cubs at the end of the day are really struggling and might not have much to play for by that point they're going to look for whatever they can to find the motivation to play. And that's that's something the Cardinals cannot take for granted. And that's something that the team is going to need to learn to do. Yes, they have done a good job recently at beating the teams that they need to beat. But it needs to be consistent and it needs to be interwoven with also generally competing with or beating teams that are at similar level to you or that are at that level that you're going to see in the playoffs because if you just pound that people down and you don't face any of that adversity 
then no matter how talented you are, once you face that, you're you're going to struggle. You know, take the 1991 UNLV Running Rebels college basketball team for example. They beat everybody by 25 30 points. I think it was something like they never trailed until they lost the game that they lost in the semifinals. And then suddenly they in the semifinals like you said they faced a team that had that adversity in front of them that had gotten smashed by them the year before and so understood the wall that was in their way and knew how to face that so when the game was close suddenly the team that had won by 30 didn't know how to play in a game that was won by three and that's where they cracked and that's why at the end of the day the team needs to face adversity there needs to be some sort of high pressure situation that the team can learn how to not even to to succeed in but they even by learning what it is like to fail you prepare yourself better for the next time because the least you can take from it is simply being less afraid to fail because you know what's on the other end of that bridge and in this season if if that's something that the young cardinal players can get and the inexperienced guys can can take into the playoffs in the next couple of years then it it can be considered in many cases a a positive that you can take from an otherwise a difficult season and look is is making the playoffs and winning a game or making the playoffs and then losing in the wild card just getting smacked does that really serve any purpose does that make this season a success i don't really think so i think that the success comes from either a winning the title or b building yourself up to be closer to succeeding that ultimate goal and unless this team really learns how to fight through adversity really learns how to compete at a high level and doesn't just sort of get handed a playoff spot by a favorable schedule and by other teams losing only to get absolutely outmatched and crushed in a wild card game that's that's not what i want to see that's it's not something that's going to benefit this team in the long run and that's something that's not going to contribute to the cardinals winning the title with Aaron Otto and Goldschmidt because at the end of the day when those moves are made that was what the ultimate plan was and no matter what happens around here with J.A. Happ or with anybody no matter what happens here the Cardinals must remain focused on that window with Aaron Otto and Goldschmidt and that's all that really matters thank you all so much for listening Uh, let's hope the Cardinals can really pull things together and Let's root them on against Milwaukee. Wainwright is looking good, and let's hope he keeps it up. So thank you all so much for listening, and go Cardinals.